Hello everyone, welcome to this online class. My name is Francis Okech and uh, my YouTube channel is Professor Francis Okech. Today we are going to look at uh, Calculus 2 and our topic is techniques of integration. There are quite a number of techniques, about six of them, but for this lesson, we are going to look at only two techniques, that is power rule and U substitution method. Before we look at the techniques of integration, let us first of all define integration. Now, what do you mean by integration? It is the reverse process of differentiation. What I mean is that in differentiation, you are given the function y equal to f of x, and you are asked to find dy over dx, which is the rate of change of y with respect to x. Now, when it comes to integration, we are going to do the opposite. The opposite means that you know the derivative of the function and you are asked to find the function. So that's why we are defining integration as the reverse process of differentiation. Uh, let me write, it is the reverse process of differentiation. So what it means that given that dy over dx is equals to a function of x, our task is to find, find y, find y. So how do you do it? This is how you're going to do it. I am going to multiply both sides of this equation by dx so that I get uh, dy over dx times dx is equals to f of x times dx. And if I simplify, you see the dx and this other dx will cancel. So this equation can be written as dy is equals to f of x times dx f of x times dx. Now, I am going to integrate both sides so that uh, we have uh, so we multiply both sides of this equation by dx to get dy over dx times dx on the left hand side is equals to f of x times dx on the right hand side. So on the left hand side, dx will cancel with the dx. So we remain with the dy is equals to f of x times dx. So to find y, uh, you are going to integrate both sides. And this is the symbol we are going to be using to integrate, you write, integrate the left hand side, also integrate the right hand side. Now, when you integrate, remember when you write dy, it means derivative of y. And this symbol means integration. So integration symbol and that derivative, they are inverses of each other. So the two will cancel out. This will cancel with this. And so this left-hand side will give us y is equals to the right-hand side is f of x dx. Then don't forget to write a constant C of integration. Why are we adding the constant of integration? Because you know when you differentiated a constant, it gave you zero. And because integration is the reverse process of differentiation, you have to recover that constant by adding C. So let me explain these symbols uh, in uh, the final answer that here, this symbol here means integration integration symbol. The f of x here, we call it integrant. 
dx here means you are integrating with respect to x. That's what it means. And then the c here, just as I have said, is called the constant of integration. So every time you are evaluating integrals, don't forget to add the constant C of integration. And something you need to take note of is that when you are given integral of maybe f of x, dx, such kind of integrals are called indefinite integrals. Why are we calling them indefinite integrals? It's because that integral lacks the limits of integration. Definite integrals, they lack the limits of integration. Also, if you have this kind of integral where you are asked to integrate from A to B, of course, from X is equals to A to X is equals to B of F of X dX, this is called definite, definite integrals. So we have two types of integrals, the indefinite ones and the definite integrals. And the difference is that in indefinite integrals, there are no limits of integration, while in definite integrals, the second one, let me number it, this is Roman one, this is Roman two. So in, in Roman one, there's no limit of integration and so we call it indefinite integral. And in Roman two, uh, you can see we have the limits of integration and so we call it definite integral. So when you work out the integrals in Roman one, you must add, you must add, add the constant C. In the other one, no need to add the constant, no need to add the constant C, why? Because when you, uh, sub, when you substitute those limits or when you plug in the limits of integration, you'll find that the C, the constant C will cancel itself. And so there was no need of even adding the constant C when it comes to definite integrals. So having introduced that on integration, let us now look at the techniques of integration. And the first technique, that uh, we are going to look at is called the power rule of integration. Let me write it. Number one is power rule of integration. So what does it state? I will state it here that uh, if, if, dy over dx is equals to x raised to n, then to integrate that, you simply add one to the power, then you divide by the resulting power. So you can say if dy over dx is equals to x raised to n, comma then to get y, it is equals to x raised to n plus one over n plus one, but this also a constant C of integration. So this rule states that to find the unknown function y, add one to the power, then divide by the resulting power. This rule applies when you're integrating polynomials. x raised to n is a polynomial of degree n. So when you integrate a polynomial, then you simply add one to the power, then divide by the resulting power. However, there is a, a restriction. The restriction is that our n that we're talking about, which is a real number, should be any real number different from negative one. Why are we saying n cannot be equal to negative one? Because look at our result. Our result is y, is equals to x raised to n plus one over n plus one plus c. So when n is negative one, our denominator will be negative one plus one, that is zero. 
and you you know division by zero is not possible. And so that's why we are restricting that n cannot be equal to negative one. So that is power rule of integration. And I also said that C is the constant of integration. So let me give you some examples. Examples, you may be asked to evaluate this. Uh, this integral may be part A. You want to integrate x cubed dx. What happens? Add one to three so that you get x power four divided by four plus C. It is as simple as such. Another one, part B, you might be asked to evaluate this. Uh, let's say you're evaluating three root x plus four. And this is, you want to integrate that with respect to x. So what you do here, you need to rewrite it. Remember root of x is the same as x raised to one over two. So this can be rewritten to take this form, three times x raised to one over two, then plus four. We are integrating this with respect to x. And this, for you to integrate it, you integrate term by term. This can be written as three times the integral of x raised to one over two dx plus uh, the integral of four dx, term by term. You might ask yourself, why am I factoring out three? Because three is a constant which you can factor out. That is called the linearity property of the integrals. So when I integrate using power rule, I'll be having here three, and this integral will now be x raised to three over two. Why three over two? because one over two plus one is three over two. And don't forget to divide by three over two. The other one, when you integrate four, remember, take note that four can be written as four times x raised to zero. So that you can now apply power rule at x raised to zero, that will give you x raised to one. So this will now give us four times x raised to one over one, I don't even need to write the one over one, plus a constant C. And uh, I can simplify this. If I simplify this, I am going to get, of course, three divided by three over two. That will give us two over nine, times X raised to three over two, plus four X, plus C. That's uh, part B. Let me give you another example uh, where we have the power to be negative. How do you go about it? Maybe you can have this as another example. Part C is the integral of three over X. Uh, let, let's talk of X cubed or even X raised to five plus one over X squared minus seven X. We want to integrate this with respect to X. So here you are going to use laws of indices. How else can we write the integrand? This thing can be written as the integral of three times X raised to negative five, plus the other one is X raised to negative two minus seven X. This is uh, you integrating with respect to X. So just like I told you, when you have a sum or a difference of uh, some terms, you just integrate each, each term at a time. When you integrate, because this can be written as the integral of the first term, that is three times integral of X raised to negative five, plus the integral of x raised to negative two minus the integral of uh, seven x. So when you integrate this, you get uh, three x raised to negative four. Why negative four? 
because we have negative five plus one, which is negative four, you divide by the resulting power, negative four. Then the other one will give us uh, plus x raised to negative one over negative one. Then the other one will give us minus seven x squared over two plus a constant c. So I, I can simplify this so that I have negative uh, three over four times x raised to negative four minus x raised to negative one. And then there's another minus seven over two x squared plus c of which this can also be written as negative three over four times x raised to four minus one over x plus seven over two x squared plus c. So that is power rule. Those three examples, those three examples explain how to use power rule of integration. Now, the other technique of integration is what we are calling the U substitution. U substitution, what does it entail? Let me write first before I explain. So you can write number two. Number two is the U substitution method. When do we use U substitution? You realize that uh, in some instances, you might be given integrals or the integrand might be very complicated to integrate using power rule. But if you make a substitution, then it will be possible for you to reduce that problem to a case where power rule can be applied. So use substitution simply reduces a problem to a case where you can easily apply power rule. I hope that is clear. And I'm going to give you examples here to illustrate the concept. So you can write examples. We just look at three examples. Part A, uh, let's start with the simpler one. The simpler one is uh, the integral, the integral of, uh, let's say we have the integral of uh, 2x plus 1, and this is raised to 1 over 3 dx. You see, when you look at this one, it is not easy to integrate it. It is not easy to integrate it unless you make some substitution. So you can say, let, let u be equal to 2x plus 1. Whatever is in the bracket, that is what you say, let it be equal to u. So you must find the derivative because I'm going to be replacing 2x plus one at the same time you need to replace dx. So you must know the derivative of, the, of u with respect to x. So you say du uh, dx is equals to two. That is equals to two. So make dx the subject. This will give us dx is equals to uh, du, I'm just cross multiplying, du over two. So when I substitute here, what will be our integral now? It will now be the integral of u raised to one over three, and you must also replace dx. We have said dx is equals to du over two. And you see uh, one over two is a constant which can be factored out. And I have explained why, because of the linearity property of the integral. So this will be one over two outside the integral of u raised to one over three du. 
You see now it is easy to use power rule of integration uh, at uh, u, at the integrand, which is u raised to one over three. You simply add one to the power, then divide by the resulting power. So that our answer here will be one over two, u raised to one over three plus one is four over three. Divide again by four over three, plus a constant C of integration. This you can also write as uh, one over two divided by four over three. That is the same as three over eight times U raised to four over three, then plus C. And finally, replace U. Don't forget to replace U because you have to go back to X. Check where we defined our U, where there is U, you're going to put two X plus one. So our answer will be three over eight into two X plus one. And that is raised to four over three plus a constant C. That is the answer. Let me give you another example on U substitution. Uh, we can write part B. Uh, we evaluate this integral x over x over. Uh, let me look for an, a better example. Let me look for a better example. You can have that as x over one minus x squared cubed. One minus x squared. And this is cubed dx. So it is not easy to integrate this unless we make a, sub a substitution. So how do we begin this? You start by saying that let, let u be equal to one minus x squared. Whatever is in the bracket, that will be your u one minus x squared. That's what is making that integrand to be complicated. So let's find uh, the derivative. So you write du over dx. That is equals to negative two x. So du over dx is ne negative two x. Make dx the subject. That is uh, du over negative two x. So let us substitute. What will we get finally? That it will be x over, now it is u, u cubed. And instead of dx, we have said that is equals to du over negative 2x. So this x will cancel with this other x so that we remain with the integral of one over u cubed, of course, with respect to u over negative two. That's one over negative two is a constant which you can factor out. So you can have this as negative one over two times the integral of one over u cubed, du. Now, what is, how else can you write one over u cubed? That is negative one over two times the integral of u raised to negative three du. Now you see it is now easy to apply power rule of integration. When we apply power rule, we are going to get negative one over two you add one to the power, that will give us u raised to negative two over negative two. And remember there's a constant c. So when we divide, what do we get? It is one over four times u raised to negative two plus c. And I told you that once you have your answer in terms of u, you need to replace u. Check where we defined our u, it was one minus x squared. So this is the same as writing as one over four into one minus x squared 
raised to negative two plus C. So you see how simple this, these integrals are, very simple to evaluate, very enjoyable. The last one, uh, we can call it part C, another example to illustrate the concept. So, so the other one, the other one is uh, you can have this as, uh, let me look for a better example. We can have the integral of 5x multiplying 1 plus 3x raised to 5. 1 plus 3x, and this is raised to 5 dx. So how do we go about this? Check whatever is in the bracket. Let that be u. So let u be equal to 1 plus 3x. So differentiate. Differentiate, find the derivative du over dx. That is equals to 3. And then you have to make the x the subject. The x that is equals to the u over three. Now let's substitute here. We'll have five x. Now instead of one plus three x, that will be u raised to five. Instead of dx, we'll have that as the u over three. But again, look at here, you see, we still have x that we need to get rid of, this x here, because everything now should be in terms of u. So you need to make x the subject. What is x in terms of u? We go back to the substitution. From here, it is clear that uh, x is equals to u minus one over three. So when I replace it here, I will have the integral of five u minus one over three, that is x, remember? And this is again multiplying u raised to five. Then we also have the u over three. So you need to factor out the constants. I can see there's three times another three in the denominator and there's five in the numerator. That should give us five over nine, three times three is nine. So that we have uh, our integrand as u minus one times u raised to five dx. Uh, you can open the bracket uh, to make uh, our work easier when integrating, because you see, we need to use power rule. So when I open the bracket here, I will have this as five over nine times the integral of u raised to, that will now be u raised to six, then minus u raised to five, du. So, use power rule integrate u raised to six, again, another one to integrate u raised to five. So this is what we have, will have as our answer. It will be five over nine. Then when you integrate u raised to six, you get u raised to seven over seven. Minus when you integrate u raised to five, you get u raised to six over six. Remember, I'm using power rule of integration and there must be a constant C of integration. So once you have found the answer in terms of U, the last step is to replace U so that you have your answer in terms of X. So this answer can now be written as when we replace U, remember where there is U is supposed to be one plus 3x. So this is the same as 5 over 9. 
then I'll have one plus three X. One plus three X is raised to seven. You also divide by seven, then minus another one plus three X raised to six. You also divide by six. And then there's a constant C of integration. So we write plus C. So that is all about the U substitution method. Of course, in this lecture, we are simply looking at how to apply the methods. On the applications areas, I will give you those later as questions, and then we solve them. So this marks the end of our class today. Uh, ensure you look for more problems so that you'll be able to understand the concept better. When you meet next time, we look at other techniques of integration. Remember I said there are six techniques. So far we have looked at two. Next time we are going to look at the other techniques of integration. So thank you for your time and have a good